Hello and welcome back to my channel, Fanfic Fantasy. Join us as we delve into the realms of fanfiction and fantasy, bringing you the best stories and discussions. Today, we're kicking off the first part of our series, What If A Player Was In JJK With Level Up System. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more content in the future. The author of this story is Deck302005. From Wattpad all the relevant links are in the description. Feel free to say hello to the author on their profile. Now, let's dive into the fanfic. The sound of an alarm clock ringing filled the room as a groaning teenager tried to reach for the snooze button, but instead, his hand landed on the desk. After a few attempts, he finally managed to silence the alarm and stop the ringing. Five minutes later, the teenager slowly rose from his bed, resembling a zombie emerging from the ground. He sat on the edge of the bed, supporting his head with his hands. His hair was disheveled, and the bed was a mess, but at least the room was clean, that was all that mattered for now. Dragging himself to the bathroom, he brushed his teeth with half-closed eyes. He then took a bath and changed into fresh clothes before preparing some toast with eggs and orange juice for breakfast. As he looked around his empty house, he muttered to himself, why did I have to be an only son? The loneliness weighed on him, wishing he had a sibling to talk to and share the load, even if it meant more work and the possibility of laziness from the sibling. It would still be better than being alone in this house with only his thoughts. Finishing his breakfast, he slowly rose from the chair and cleaned up the dishes. He put the house key around his neck like a necklace and made sure the door was locked before leaving. Glancing at his watch, he realized he had plenty of time before school started. He used his time wisely, going to the nearest store to buy snacks and daily necessities. After shopping, he dropped off the groceries at home, ensuring everything was in its place, and then used his bike to get to school on time. Arriving at school, he attended his classes with a bored expression on his face. Time skipped to after school. He walked home, and as he did, it felt like time had paused as a screen appeared in front of him. Do you wish to become a player? He stared at the screen, feeling as though time had frozen along with him before mentally choosing yes. It had to be his imagination playing tricks on him due to lack of sleep. Congratulations on becoming a player. The screen read as he swiped it away and continued walking home. He was tired and dismissed it as his mind playing tricks on him in his exhausted state. He did his homework and collapsed into bed, dead tired. Unbeknownst to him, it was a daily quest that had been automatically accepted. There was a warning on the quest, stating that failure to complete it would result in punishment, but he had missed it. As he slept, the timer on the quest ran out, and suddenly, he felt as if he were lying on scorching hot sand. He jolted awake, feeling as though he had burned himself, and looked at the screen in front of him, where a message appeared. Due to the player not completing the daily quest on time, he will be punished. A new quest appeared, survive for 8 hours. Rewards, status recovery, 3 stat points. The quest had been automatically accepted, but the teenager's mind was focused on the words survive. He glanced behind him and saw it, a gigantic centipede emerging from the sand, accompanied by many more approaching him. Instinctively, his fight or flight response kicked in, and he started running for his life. He ran as if his life depended on it, because it did. Though relatively fit and regularly exercising to avoid becoming overweight, he knew his stamina had its limits. There was no way he could run for such a long time without passing out from lack of oxygen. For eight hours straight, I ran and hid for my life, desperately trying to survive against the relentless centipede creatures. These formidable creatures proved to be incredibly resilient, destroying buildings that served as my hiding places with ease. Their heightened senses made it nearly impossible to escape their detection, even when I thought I was well hidden. It felt as if they had some form of thermal or X-ray vision, able to locate me wherever I tried to conceal myself. My body was on the verge of collapsing, every muscle screaming in agony, but the adrenaline coursing through my veins kept me going. The fear of being caught and killed by these creatures pushed me to my physical limits. Finally, after what seemed like an eternity, I found myself back in my room, collapsed on the floor, surrounded by sand. I was drenched in sweat, my whole body shaking from exhaustion. A notification appeared on a screen before me, offering rewards for surviving the ordeal. Quest survived has been completed. Choose your rewards. Status recovery. Three stat points. One random skill. I stared at the screen, my weariness evident in my eyes. I decided to select the status recovery reward, hoping it would alleviate my fatigue. As soon as I used it, a wave of rejuvenation washed over me, erasing all signs of exhaustion. I felt brand new. 
Taking a moment to catch my breath, I studied the screen more attentively. It was no longer a figment of my imagination. It was undeniably real. The punishments and rewards it offered were genuine. I examined the quest that had previously seemed like a figment of my imagination. Daily quest, 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, 10-kilometer run. Warning, failure to complete this quest will result in punishment. Glancing at the time, I realized that no time had passed since I left the room. I changed my clothes and began performing the exercises I could do within the confines of my house. After two and a half hours, I finished all the indoor exercises, feeling exhausted but determined. However, I still had to complete a 10-kilometer run. Resting briefly and hydrating myself, I put on my running shoes and stepped outside. Time skip. After running for an hour and 30 minutes, I finally received a notification. Daily quest has been completed. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, 10-kilometer run. Choose a reward. Status recovery, 3 stat points, random skill. Despite my fatigue, I chose the skill reward, specifically the status recovery skill. I used it immediately, feeling a surge of energy as my strength was restored. I stopped sweating profusely, knowing I needed to be presentable for school later. Examining my status, I realized that my current stats were quite underwhelming. Status, name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 1. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, N.A. HP, 100. MP, 10. Strength, 9. Vitality, 10. Agility, 5. Intelligence, 10. Sense, 10. Remaining points, 0. My stats appeared rather pathetic, but I saw an opportunity to become stronger and achieve something more meaningful in life than merely scraping by. A smile formed on my face as I considered the possibilities. With newfound determination, I headed back home, eager to discover more features of this mysterious system that I had stumbled upon. Time skip, one week. In a park, a teenager sprinted at full speed, showing signs of exertion but not extreme fatigue. Eventually, he came to a stop and drank some water he had brought along. A notification appeared. Daily quest has been completed. 100 push-ups, 100 sit-ups, 100 squats, 10-kilometer run. Choose a reward. Status recovery, 3 stat points, random skill. The teenager's hand moved around, eventually selecting the status recovery reward but choosing not to use it. He would probably not use his stats point until he get his class just to be safe. Status, the teenager muttered, and the familiar screen materialized in front of him. Status, name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 1. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, the player. HP, 100. MP, 10. Strength, 9. Vitality, 10. Agility, 5. Intelligence, 10. Sense, 10. Remaining points, 6. The teenager also noticed a random key in his inventory, which he received as an additional reward for completing one of his daily quests. Curiosity piqued, he examined its description. F-Rank Dungeon Key. Item class, common. A key used to open an F-Rank dungeon populated by F-Rank monsters. The description was brief, but the teenager realized that entering the F-Rank dungeon would require him to be stronger. He didn't want to face the same level of danger as in the penalty area, so he made a promise to himself to train relentlessly and clear the dungeon by the end of the month. A new quest appeared. Ding. Quest. Beating the dungeon has been created. Description. You have made a promise to yourself to complete the dungeon by the end of the month. Rewards. 100 EXP. One small health potion. Yes or no. Motivated by his newfound passion, the teenager accepted the quest, vowing to prepare everything necessary to conquer the dungeon by the end of the month. After contemplating for a while, I made the decision to accept the quest, knowing that I would have to train rigorously to overcome the challenges that awaited me in the dungeon. Time skip. Inside a small, modest house, beads of sweat rolled down my forehead as I practiced hand-to-hand -hand combat. Although I was still a beginner, I had managed to grasp the basic movements and techniques. Ever since I acquired my peculiar power, I found that I only needed a few hours of sleep, and using a status recovery item would restore my energy to its fullest. In my determination to succeed, I devoted myself to daily training pushing my body to its limits. Hours were spent watching instructional videos on various combat techniques, both armed and unarmed. Given my limited financial means, I resorted to using kitchen utensils as makeshift training weapons. A small knife served as a suitable substitute for a dagger, given its size and weight. Each day, after completing my training, I would take a refreshing shower and consume a nourishing meal. Feeling revitalized, I reached into my inventory and retrieved the key that had been bestowed upon me. Inserting it into the lock, I turned it, and to my surprise, the door swung open to reveal a mysterious dungeon. 
without hesitation, driven by curiosity and a sense of adventure, I stepped forward into the unknown, and as the door closed behind me, I felt a surge of anticipation. Sighing audibly, I cautiously ventured along the dimly lit path of the dungeon, my steps deliberately soft to avoid attracting any unwanted attention. After a mere four minutes of exploration, I encountered my first formidable opponent. Standing before me were a group of goblins, their ranks identified by their displayed level. Goblins, level 2, HP 100, MP 10, Strength 4, Vitality 10, Agility 3, Intelligence 1, Sense 3. Studying the goblin stats, I quickly deduced that their overall abilities were inferior to mine. However, I noted that they wielded crude clubs, a weapon I lacked. Taking advantage of their limited senses, I strategized, hiding behind a large rock until one of the goblins passed by. Once it was out of sight, I emerged stealthily, positioning myself behind the unsuspecting creature. Summoning every ounce of strength within me, I delivered a swift and powerful punch directly to its head. The impact was significant. Critical damage, 15. The goblin's HP visibly decreased, and it appeared dazed. Without a moment's hesitation, I unleashed a barrage of punches, targeting the goblin's head with precision and intent. My goal was to exploit the stun effect, rendering the goblin defenseless. Blow after blow rained upon the creature until, finally, it succumbed to the assault. In response, a message from the system appeared before me. You killed a goblin. Goblin loot has dropped. Curiosity peaked. I approached the fallen goblin and carefully searched its possessions, looting the club it had carried as well as the meager sum of ten gold coins. Curiosity consumed me as I inspected the wooden club in my hands, seeking information. Wooden club. Item rank, common. Description, a wooden club that deals 10% more blunt damage. Recognizing the club's potential value, I swiftly equipped it confident that it would serve as a valuable asset in my future encounters within the dungeon. Armed with newfound resolve, I ventured deeper. Into the labyrinthine corridors, my senses heightened, and my instincts honed. From that point onward, my encounters with the goblins followed a similar pattern. I would position myself for surprise attacks, always aiming for their heads to exploit the stun effect. Though it may not have been the most honorable approach, survival took precedence over nobility. My life was at stake, and I refused to rush headlong into danger without a clear plan. Status, I murmured, curiosity gnawing at me. I desired to assess my progress and ascertain my current state. Status, name, Kento Tatsu. Level, 2. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, N.A. HP, 205. MP, 10. Strength, 11. Vitality, 11. Agility, 6. Intelligence, 11. Sense, 11. Remaining points, 11. Observing my status, I felt a surge of satisfaction. My efforts had paid off, evident in the growth of my attributes. However, the true test awaited me. I yearned for a genuine challenge, one that didn't rely solely on exploiting the goblin's weaknesses. Despite the risks involved, a surge of adrenaline coursed through my veins, tempting me to abandon caution and engage in a fair fight with the goblins. I knew the potential consequences of such an impulsive decision, but the call of battle resonated within me. I couldn't deny the primal desire to test my skills against these foes. Reluctantly, I acquiesced to my inner yearning, venturing out into the open. Soon enough, a goblin spotted me and rushed forward, brandishing a menacing machete. Shit, I muttered under my breath, acknowledging the pointed weapon in the goblin's grasp. The goblin swung its machete toward my chest, but I deftly evaded the strike. Reacting swiftly, I utilized the wooden club that had served me well until now, delivering a forceful blow to the goblin's head. The impact was so powerful that it shattered the club into pieces. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 XP. The sound of the club breaking caught the attention of nearby goblins, and within moments, five of them were charging at me with murderous intent. Unarmed and with adrenaline surging through my veins, I swiftly seized the fallen goblin's machete, equipping it without hesitation. Assuming a focused stance, I sprinted toward the incoming goblins, their swords swinging recklessly. Two of them held back, relying on bows and arrows to attack from a distance. Utilizing my height and agility to my advantage, I concentrated my strikes on their heads, aiming for quick and lethal dispatches. Amidst the chaos, pain suddenly shot through my shoulder as two arrows found their mark. Minus 15 damage. Bleeding status effect applied. Player will lose 5 HP every second. A curse escaped my lips as the pain intensified, and the sight of my own blood flowing only heightened my resolve. 
I decapitated one of the goblins, employing its lifeless body as a temporary shield against incoming arrows. With an axe kick, I struck another goblin's head with such force that blood spurted from its nose. Before it could regain its composure, I swiftly impaled it through the brain with my dagger, leaving the blade embedded there, and quickly procured a dagger from its lifeless grip. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 XP. The remaining goblin charged at me fearlessly, swinging its sword with reckless abandon. Agile and alert, I sidestepped the attack and swiftly sliced through its neck, severing its head in one fluid motion. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 XP. Gasping for breath, I took a moment to assess my surroundings. The lifeless bodies of goblins littered the floor, a testament to my survival and tenacity. The pain in my shoulder remained, a constant reminder of my vulnerability. With every challenge conquered, my confidence grew, and my determination solidified. The dungeon held more secrets, treasures, and opponents awaiting me. Though the path ahead was treacherous and fraught with dangers, I pressed on, eager to explore the depths and unravel the mysteries that lay hidden within. And so, with the taste of blood still on my lips, I ventured deeper into the heart of the dungeon, prepared to face whatever trials awaited me, knowing that my destiny was intertwined with this enigmatic realm. Time skip 40 minutes. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 damage. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 damage. You have killed a goblin. You gain 10 damage. You have leveled up. Status. Name. Kenzo Tatsu. Level. 5. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The player. HP. 420. MP. 440. Strength. 14. Vitality. 14. Agility. 9. Intelligence. 14. Sense. 14. Remaining points. 26. I'm never doing that again, I said to myself as I killed the last goblin. Every time I leveled up, my health would be fully restored. I wiped the goblin blood off my face as I walked out from the pile of bodies I had piled up somewhere in the dungeon. You gained 500 gold. After looting the goblins of all their gold, I looked on the floor and saw some weapons that I could use. So I did the only reasonable thing someone in my position would do. You obtained 15 swords. You obtained 40 arrows. You obtained 15 bows. You obtained 10 wooden clubs. You obtained 10 daggers. You obtained 3 leather pants. You obtained 5 leather chest plates. After looting the goblins of all their belongings and adding them to my inventory, I took out the leather armor I had acquired and looked at the leather pants and chest plate that I was considering putting on myself. I took a deep breath before looking at the description of the leather armor I was considering wearing. Leather leggings. Item class, common. Description, leather leggings made with leather. Wearing this armor reduces damage by 10%. Piercing damage cannot be stopped, however. I then looked at the chest piece and realized that it provided the same buff, so I put on both of them. It looked weird on me, but I figured out that I could make them invisible, and nobody had to see this atrocity on me. So I did. After fully gearing up, I walked deeper into the dungeon. I was determined to clear this F-rank dungeon no matter what. As I walked deeper, I entered a hall that was intricately decorated with shiny rocks. I also noticed a door with a symbol of weird eyes all over it. That must be where the boss is, I said to myself as I looked at the door that now stood in my way. I took out a dagger from my inventory and slowly pushed the door open. I was met with an arrow that grazed my cheek, narrowly missing my head as I entered the room. If I hadn't tilted my head to the side, I would probably be dead by now. I looked at the boss and the creature that had almost killed me and saw a relatively fit goblin. He wielded a huge wooden club, which was probably his main weapon. He also wore a very pretty necklace around his neck that emitted a weird glow. That is not a goblin, I said as I now noticed how tall this monster was. It was probably an ogre or an orc. I observed the monster, trying to find its stats, and as if the system was reading my mind, a screen appeared in front of me. Ogre, titles, the leader of the goblins, health, 650, MP, 10, strength, 30, vitality, 16, agility, 4, intelligence, 5, sense, 10. So he is very dumb, but he hits like a truck, I said to myself as I saw the ogre's stats. He swung his club at me, and I jumped away as the ground where I stood got shattered. I landed on a wall, which I used to boost myself toward the ogre. I used my dagger to try and stab into his skin. I encountered some resistance, so I applied more force until I drew blood. You have dealt 16 damage. I jumped off the ogre's body as he tried to smash me where I stood on his body. He accidentally smacked himself in the head with his club. Minus 33 damage. The ogre now only had 601 health left, so I continued using the same strategy over and over again. But something caught my attention. As I dealt damage to the ogre, I could see that his necklace was glowing more and more, 
and the ogre was getting stronger. He was getting stronger, but he was also becoming less logical. I dashed at him, attempting to kill him, but he swung his wooden club at me. Due to my momentum pushing me forward, my body collided with the wooden club, and I was smacked away. You have taken 200 damage. You have broken a few ribs. I coughed up a mouthful of blood as I felt my broken ribs in my chest. It was getting hard to breathe, and the ogre was rushing right at me. While I was struggling, I felt a weird energy in my chest. This time, I didn't try to keep it in, but instead, I let it flow outside my body. Skill acquired, mana enhancement. I felt stronger and tougher than before. Using this new skill I had acquired, I relentlessly attacked the ogre while not giving him a chance to catch his breath. You have dealt 35 damage. I maneuvered around his giant arms before reaching his eyes and slashing at them. You have dealt 40 damage. While the ogre was clutching his eyes in pain, I dashed toward his leg and cut his hamstring. You have dealt 45 damage. He fell onto his back, clearly in pain. With his hamstring cut, he couldn't get back up. Taking advantage of the situation, I continued my assault. You have dealt 20 damage. I kept slashing at his arms, attempting to paralyze them. You have. I then targeted his throat, slashing at it more viciously pouring all the mana I could into my attacks. Phew. The dagger emitted a blue glow as I lifted it up in the air for the final strike. With all the power I had access to at that moment, I severed the ogre's head. You have killed the ogre. You gain 1000 EXP for killing the ogre. You have leveled up. You have cleared the dungeon. You have gained a brand new skill for clearing the F rank dungeon, dash. I was bombarded by notifications, and one notification, in particular, caught my attention. Quest. Beating the dungeon has been completed. Description. You made a promise to yourself to complete the dungeon by the end of the month. Rewards. 100 EXP. One small health potion. Neat. I said to myself as I walked toward the ogre and removed the necklace he had around his neck. I examined the item and read its description. Ogre necklace. Item rank. Rare. Description. The necklace of the goblin chief, crafted using the bones of his fallen enemies that he deemed worthy. Once activated, anyone wearing this necklace will gain an extra 15% strength and 4% vitality while also losing 6% intelligence. Skill. Ogre wrath. The more damage you take, the stronger you become but the less logical you will be. Skill, Ogre Resistance, once your health drops below 20%, you will take 15% less damage. My mouth remained open as I read the description of this skill. This necklace was great. Granted, I would be dumber while it was active, but that was a risk I was willing to take for now. I put the necklace on and felt no immediate difference, likely because it was currently not activated. Just for fun, I decided to activate it for a second. Immediately, I felt the change as my body became stronger and tougher, and my mind became a bit angrier and less logical. I walked towards a random wall in the dungeon, mustering all the strength I had, and punched it with all my might. The wall cracked under the impact, showing that I had dealt some damage, although it wasn't as significant as I had hoped. But considering I was still only at level 5, it was better than nothing. Besides, I had plenty of unused stat points that I could allocate later. A screen appeared before me, asking if I wanted to leave the dungeon. I pondered why it took so long for the screen to show up, but dismissed it as a minor inconvenience. I walked towards the chief's body, preparing to loot him. Upon looting, I gained 200 gold, adding to the 500 gold I already had. Now I have 700 gold, I said to myself, doing a quick mental calculation. Satisfied with the loot, I clicked yes on the screen to leave the dungeon. In an instant, I found myself back where I had entered the dungeon, standing in front of the door leading to my room. I pushed open the door and dropped onto my bed, utterly exhausted. Sleep enveloped me swiftly. Time skipped four hours, and I woke up to a notification in front of my eyes, you have slept in a bed. HP and mana have been recovered. I sighed and dismissed the notification, only to notice that my shirt was torn and stained with blood. It seemed I had slept on the bed with the blood still on me, resulting in the bed sheets becoming soaked as well. I let out another deep sigh, removed the bloodstained sheets and my ripped shirt, and made my way to the laundry machine in the house. It was time to do some cleaning. After finishing the arduous task of cleaning the blood from the bed sheets, I felt a bit tired and flopped down on my bed. I also packed my now ripped shirt into a small bag with other items I would never use again. Curiously, I looked at the palms of my hands and felt a strange energy coursing through them. 
It was a familiar sensation, the same energy I had used to level up during my fight with the ogre. I wanted to explore its potential further, so I sat down and focused on my mana, feeling its pure and refreshing essence. It felt like a blank page, ready to be filled with my imagination and limitless possibilities. Carefully, I channeled some of that mana into my palm, allowing it to seep out through my skin and form a ball of energy. Opening my eyes, I beheld a beautiful blue ball of energy in the palm of my hand. A system notification appeared before me. You have created a skill. What would you like to call it? Looking at the ball of energy, a name immediately came to mind. Purification ball, I said softly. The notification informed me that the skill purification ball had been learned. With a swipe of my hand, I dismissed the notification, but my gaze remained fixed on the mesmerizing energy ball. I ceased sending mana to the ball, instead focusing on drawing the mana back into my body. As I did so, a notification chimed in my ears. Mana absorption skill has been learned. Having fully absorbed the ball of energy in my hands, I sighed and finally acknowledged a notification that had been waiting for my attention for a while. Mana absorption, level 1. The user can absorb 10% of any mana-based attack or defense. This is pretty nice, I remarked, satisfied with the skill description. I could absorb mana, which could prove quite useful. Feeling a surge of energy within me, I decided it was time to get some exercise. My body seemed to crave adrenaline and excitement more frequently now. As I jogged, I touched my chest, still feeling the remnants of the pain from my cracked ribs. It was a stark reminder of how close I had come to death in the dungeon. The thought sent a shiver down my spine. I couldn't dwell on it for too long, though. Instead, I placed my hands on my chest and focused on my current state. Status, I muttered, wanting to assess my condition. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 6. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 1175. MP, 545. Strength, 21. Vitality, 21. Agility, 15. Intelligence, 15. Sense, 15. Remaining points, 29. It's time to use some points, I muttered to myself, determined to allocate my stat points wisely. I distributed the points mainly to strength, vitality, and agility, hoping to improve my overall combat abilities. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 6. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 1175. MP, 545. Strength, 21. Vitality, 21. Agility, 24. Intelligence, 15. Sense, 15. Remaining points, 20. As I uttered those words, I felt a sudden surge of strength coursing through my body, as if something explosive had awakened within me. I broke into a sweat, feeling stronger than ever before. I wondered just how much stronger I had become. Leaving my room, I opened the door gently, ready to face whatever awaited me. I opened the door to my room and walked outside, making my way downstairs to the living room before heading towards the exit of the house. My house was spacious, allowing me to store plenty of items, but now wasn't the time for that. I reached the entrance, locking the door behind me before stepping out into the fresh air. Muttering to myself, I activated my status screen. A familiar blue interface appeared before me, displaying my stats. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 6. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 1175. MP, 545. Strength, 21. Vitality, 21. Agility, 24. Intelligence, 15. Sense, 15. Remaining points, 20. Alright, let's see how much stronger I've become, I said aloud as I started running. To my amazement, my speed surpassed that of cars and even bicycles. I felt invigorated, with seemingly endless stamina. Curious to test my newfound abilities, I activated my skill, Dash. In an instant, I felt my speed nearly double for a brief moment before returning to normal. I continued dashing repeatedly, trying to maintain the skill for as long as possible. After spamming Dash for about five minutes, exhaustion finally caught up to me. I leaned over, gasping for air when something caught my attention. What is this? I muttered, noticing deformed creatures huddled together in a corner. They appeared to be cursed spirits, grade 4 according to the system notifications. As I approached for a closer look, their murmurs became audible. Mommy, I don't want to go to school. Why does he get it and I don't? School is too hard. Despite their babbling, no one seemed to notice the existence of these creatures. I walked closer, realizing there were many of them piled together. Oh, hell no, I exclaimed, taking a better look at the swarm. Without hesitation, I invoked my skill, Purification Ball, launching it at the spirits. System notifications filled my vision. You have dealt 200 damage. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. 
You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 1 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 1 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 1 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. That was easy, I remarked, observing the lifeless bodies. I casually left the alleyway, walking away as if nothing had happened. Time skipped, and I began to notice similar spirits floating around people everywhere I went. A smile crept onto my lips as I realized the implications. I can gain EXP even outside of dungeons, I said, a small smile forming. I let out a giggle before regaining my composure and making my way back home. It was time to create a training schedule. Time skipped a week, during which I hunted grade 4 curse spirits. You have killed a grade 4 curse spirit. You gain 10 EXP. You have leveled up. Level 8. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The player. HP. 1385. MP. 760. Strength. 23. Vitality. 23. Agility. 26. Intelligence. 17. Sense. 17. Remaining points, 30. I've killed so many grade 4 curses, and they seem to respond quickly, I remarked to myself as I made my way to school. I wore the ogre necklace around my neck, ready to tap into its power whenever needed. I nonchalantly attended class, tuning out distractions. When the final bell rang, I swiftly left my seat and exited the school. After walking a considerable distance away, I noticed a strange creature staring at me. I observed it, and above its head, I saw. Grade 3 Curse Spirit HP 125, Strength 10, Vitality 10, Agility 9, Intelligence 3, Sense 4. This one's of a higher grade than the grade 4 curses, I muttered, looking at the creature. However, it still seemed weak to me. Setting my backpack down by the roadside, I cracked my knuckles, pulled out a dagger from my inventory, and activated mana enhancement. The dagger shimmered with enhanced power and I felt a surge within me. HP 1385. MP 760, Strength 23 plus 4.6, Vitality 2, 3 plus 20%, Agility 17 plus 20%, Intelligence 17, Sense 17 plus 3.4, Remaining Points 36, I dashed towards the cursed spirit, slashing it relentlessly with my daggers. My speed was too much for it to handle. System notifications flooded my vision. You have dealt critical damage, 30. You have dealt critical damage, 33. You have killed a grade 3 curse. You gained 100 EXP. I returned the iron daggers to my inventory and retrieved my backpack before walking back home, feeling satisfied. Interesting, a man commented, watching me as I walked away after slaying the curse. He didn't use any cursed energy, he mused softly. Then, shrugging, he said, this can wait. I need to buy some sweets. Feeling energized and ready to take on anything. I didn't let the few times I had to use system recovery when overwhelmed by grade 4 cursed spirits bother me. I changed into clothes that allowed for more freedom of movement while still looking casual. After stretching my body a bit, I walked outside and approached my door, ready to enter another dungeon. Holding the key in my hands, I read its description. E-Rank Dungeon Item Rank Common A dungeon that leads you into the den of the wolf. The Wolf King resides inside this dungeon and will devour anyone who enters. I inserted the key into the doorknob and opened the door, revealing the interior of a cave. Taking a deep breath, I stepped inside as the door and dungeon gate closed behind me. You have entered an E-rank dungeon. You cannot leave the dungeon until you clear it. I read the blue text and let out a sigh before pulling out my daggers, knowing that this dungeon would likely be much harder than the F-rank one. I remained on guard as I ventured further. After walking for a while, I encountered the first monster of the dungeon, a wolf with a horn. Evolved Wolf Beast Description A ferocious beast that is fast and strong. It tears through limbs and can bite through human bones like sticks. Level 8 HP 625 MP 90 Strength 20 Vitality 15 Agility 20 Intelligence 9 Sense 30. As soon as I read its information, the wolf's nose twitched, and it focused its gaze on me. Fuck, I muttered, barely blocking its fast and powerful strike with its nail. I quickly jumped back, pulled out a dagger from my inventory, and activated mana reinforcement. Mana reinforcement has been activated. You gain a 20% boost to all attributes and take 5% less damage. Using dash, I rushed towards the wolf with blinding speed. We clashed, our speeds almost even, though I had a slight advantage. 
However, this monster had skills and proved to be a formidable opponent. As I managed to push the wolf off me, its horns glowed green, and a mini tornado appeared, slashing at me. Minus 45 damage. HP, 1341385. Shit, I muttered, jumping back to avoid further attacks. The wolf was already lunging for my throat, but I swiftly moved out of the way, slashing at its side with my dagger. You have dealt 35 damage. Bleeding effect has been applied to the wolf. My dagger broke as I aimed for the wolf's eyes, dealing critical damage. Critical damage, 45. Half blindness status effect has been applied to the wolf. Pulling out another dagger from my inventory, I continued the fight, giving it everything I had. However, the wolf refused to go down, no matter how many times I slashed at it. I seized every opportunity, attacking its vulnerable areas despite the risks involved. Time skipped. Exhausted and covered in my own and the wolf's blood, I sat in a pool of it, gasping for air. Level 8. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The Player. HP. 701385th. MP. 207060th. Strength. 23. Vitality. 23. Agility. 17. Intelligence. 17. Sense. 17. Remaining points, 36. How could one wolf mess me up so badly? I said, looking at the near-dead wolf's body on the floor. I approached the wolf and stabbed my blade into its head. You have killed an evolved wolf. You gain 200 EXP. You gain 50 gold. You consumed one status recovery. Using one of my status recoveries, I healed myself to full. Sensing a group of wolves approaching, likely drawn by the scent of blood, I realized I had to act quickly. They probably smelled my blood, I muttered, gazing at the pool of blood I was laying in. I stood up, activated the ogre necklace, and felt the surge of additional strength and vitality. Ogre necklace has been activated. You gain an extra 15% in strength and 4% in vitality, while losing 6% in intelligence. Skill mana enhancement has been activated. Taking a deep breath, I rushed towards the approaching wolves, slashing at anything that got too close. You dealt 35 damage to an evolved wolf. You dealt 34 damage to an evolved wolf. You dealt 37 damage to an evolved wolf. You dealt 33 damage to an evolved wolf. You dealt a critical damage of 53 to an evolved wolf. However, I also suffered damage in return. You took 200 damage. You took 100 damage. You are now under the status effect bleeding. You now have the status effect broken ribs. You took 200 damage. You dealt 45 damage. You dealt critical damage of 55. You, I continued slashing at the wolves' throats and aiming for their heads to maximize damage. Time skipped. I kept slashing and stabbing relentlessly, not giving the wolves a moment's respite. You killed an evolved wolf. You gained 200 EXP. You gained 50 gold. I dashed backward, avoiding a wolf's attempt to bite my head off, and proceeded to strike another wolf. The wolf bit one of its companions, inflicting significant damage. Evolved Wolf, level 10. HP, 500 900. MP, 2400. Since when did these fuckers get so strong? I said, growing annoyed. The wolves growled and drooled, eyeing me like fresh meat they wanted to devour. One wolf charged at me while the others attempted to encircle me. Not wanting to end up six feet under, I leaped over the charging wolf and bashed its skull with a purr. Efficacion Ball. You dealt 200 damage. You killed an evolved wolf. You gained 200 EXP. You gained 50 gold. The wolf's health plummeted to zero, even though I had dealt only 200 damage. Apparently, hitting a fatal organ was all that mattered, regardless of the actual damage done. A small smile formed on my lips as I realized this. As long as my hits were lethal, it didn't matter where I struck. I found myself surrounded by the remaining 20 wolves, but instead of feeling fear, a smile of determination crept across my face. If you want to eat me, you'll have to earn it, I said, eyeing the wolves defiantly. The wolves growled and charged at me together. You gain 50 gold x20. You have leveled up x2. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 10. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 1595. MP, 970. Strength, 25. Vitality, 25. Agility, 19. Intelligence, 19. Sense, 19. Remaining points, 46. Gold, 19 -0. Finally, they're dead, I said, looking at the corpses of the wolves around me. They were fast, and their bites had ruined my shirt. Noticing that my leather armor was about to break, I decided to equip a new set. I had plenty to spare from killing so many goblins. The new armor would be a good upgrade, providing better protection against the piercing damage I had been receiving. 
I looted the wolf bodies, gathering wolf fur and teeth. The teeth were high quality, and I collected one from each wolf. Wolf teeth. Item rank, uncommon. Description, the sharp teeth of an evolved wolf. They are very sharp and can cut through flesh like it was nothing. Looking at the wolf fur, I found it to be resistant to most piercing damage but vulnerable to blunt attacks. It was also great for keeping warm. Wolf fur. Item rank, uncommon. Description, the fur of an evolved wolf. This fur is tough enough to resist most piercing damage but has no resistance against blunt attacks. It will keep you warm no matter where you are. Looting the wolves had also triggered a significant change. I had reached level 10 and the shop had unlocked for me. Shop, weapon shop, armor shop, potion shop. Feeling the need for better armor, I clicked on the armor shop. Several options were available, including leather armor, chainmail armor, iron armor, wolf fur armor, lizard armor, mage robe, and assassin robe. For my current funds, I decided to go with the lizard armor, which was known for its damage absorption and speed enhancing properties. Lizard armor. Item rank, rare. Description. This armor was made using the scales of the proud warriors of the lizard clan. It protects you from all kinds of damage, absorbing 45% of any incoming damage. Due to being crafted by the Lizard Tribe, known for their speed, this armor grants a 15% speed boost. After the purchase, I now had 15 gold left. The armor, when activated, would make me more durable and faster. Moving on to the weapon shop, I saw various weapons available. I opted for the Poisonous Dagger, a rare weapon with a paralyzing poison that could kill enemies over time. Poisonous Dagger. Item Rank, Rare. Description. This dagger was made using a single fang and just like a snake, it has a lot of poison. It stuns and paralyzes anyone hit with it and can even kill them after multiple hits. After buying the dagger, I had 500 gold remaining. I decided to save it for future use. With my new equipment in place, I headed towards another group of wolves to test my improved abilities. Time skip, 5 minutes. Finally, a wolf, I said, spotting an evolved wolf from a distance. The wolf's horn seemed broken, indicating it wouldn't use any magical attacks. Without hesitation, I dashed towards it, slashing its left eye with my dagger, which was coated with poison. You have dealt 35 damage. Evolved wolf is now afflicted with the bleeding and poison status effect. The wolf seemed weakened by the poison, and I continued my relentless assault, aiming for its vital areas. It didn't last long before succumbing to my attacks. You killed an evolved wolf. You gained 200 EXP. You gained 50 gold. Feeling the ease with which I cleared the dungeon, I continued for 6 hours, disposing of wolves effortlessly. You killed a wolf. You gained 200 EXP. You gained 50 gold. You have leveled up. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 11. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 17 MP, 1075. Strength, 26. Vitality, 26. Agility, 20. Intelligence, 20. Sense, 20. Remaining points, 51. Gold, 1000. I just committed mass genocide on a group of evolved wolves, and right now, I feel no pity for them, I said, looking at the wolf bodies. I had looted them, finding some useful items. As I ventured further, I sensed the presence of the alpha wolf, a massive creature standing 15 meters tall. I took a deep breath, preparing myself, and then rushed towards the boss with all my might. I attempted to attack the alpha wolf while it wasn't looking, but it swiftly swiped me away, sending me flying. My body collided with the wall, leaving a permanent dent in the concrete. I struggled to my feet and launched a barrage of fast and strong attacks on the wolf, all while avoiding its powerful jaws. The newly bought armor proved its worth, as the wolf struggled to bite through its tough scales. I decided to use my purification ball skill on the monster, but it resisted the attack with remarkable resilience, only taking 200 damage out of its 2000 health. The Alpha Wolf retaliated by howling, sending a powerful gust of wind my way, which I managed to dodge. I continued my assault, running at the wolf and aiming for its head. Having most of my skills activated, my mana regeneration exceeded the drain, allowing me to sustain the pace for a solid 9 hours. I was tiring, but the wolf was on the brink of death, so I pressed on. One last charge, and I unleashed all my mana into the mana enhancement skill. The skill turned out to be immensely powerful, as I watched the wolf's health drop to zero. I had managed to defeat the wolf in a single strike, but the move left me without mana. It was a risky move, but it paid off. You killed the evolved wolf alpha. You gained 5000 EXP. 
you gain 500 gold. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 11. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, the player. HP, 170. MP, 1075. Strength, 26. Vitality, 26. Agility, 20. Intelligence, 20. Sense, 20. Remaining points, 51. Gold, 15 -0. I'll allocate 20 points into strength and leave the other stats for now, I decided. Enhancing my strength to deal even greater damage. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 11. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 17 -0. MP, 1075. Strength, 46. Vitality, 26. Agility, 20. Intelligence, 20. Sense, 20. Remaining points, 31. Gold, 15 -0. I felt a substantial surge in strength, and while I would distribute points to other stats if needed, right now, strength was my focus. I was becoming significantly more formidable. I could withstand most challenges, even a few blows from the goblin boss. Comparing my current self to my past, I had transformed into a far more powerful individual. I stretched my body and noticed a portal appearing before me. Intrigued, I approached and found a chest nearby. Upon opening it, I discovered its contents. You found 500 gold. You found a health potion. You found a mana recovery potion. You found a skill stone. Nice, I have two health potions and one mana recovery potion now, I'm used. Curious about the skill stone, I pulled it from my inventory and crushed it. The result was surprising. You crushed the skill stone. You gained a new skill, teleportation. Skill, teleportation. Description. The user of this skill can teleport anywhere within a 10 feet radius. This skill uses 50 mana points each time it is used. I was taken aback by the new skill's potential. It had the possibility of being incredibly useful if utilized correctly. Deciding it was time to head home as night had fallen, I stepped through the portal. I arrived at my original location and checked the time on my cloak, it was 3 a.m. Sighing, I walked back to my bathroom, planning to take a bath. I undressed in front of the mirror and was surprised to see how much my body had changed. My muscles and abs were now visible, a physique many would envy. I wondered how I had become so ripped in such a short time. I wonder how much stronger I can become, I pondered, gazing at my reflection. I felt an intense excitement to explore my potential. Could I grow strong enough to change the fate of an entire country with a single blow? After a bath, I went to bed and drifted off to sleep. The next day began with my alarm, and I quickly got ready before walking to school instead of using my bike. I arrived on time, endured the classes, and walked away from the school after they ended. However, today was different. I thought I saw a white-haired man standing outside the school, but as quickly as I saw him, he disappeared, leaving me uncertain if he had been real. Is my mind playing tricks on me? I muttered, but I couldn't shake the feeling of the immense power I sensed from that man. It was like comparing a grain of sand to the Eiffel Tower. Leaving the school grounds to avoid interference, I challenged the man to reveal himself from the shadows, and suddenly, a man with white hair and a blindfold appeared before me. Hello there, the man greeted me, his sharp features accentuated by his appearance. Why were you following me? Are you some kind of creep? I questioned him, keeping my guard up. I find you quite interesting. Your body shows no sign of curse energy, yet you seem to utilize a different kind of energy, the man named Satoru Gojo explained, studying me intently. Concerned, I responded, if you're some kind of predator, be warned that I'll protect myself from you. Satoru Gojo seemed taken aback by my assumption. I am not a predator, I'm simply curious. I've never encountered someone like you. It would be nice to know your name, I said, still cautious. I am Satoru Gojo, he introduced himself. That's all I wanted to know. I'll be on my way, I said, remaining alert. Name, Satoru Gojo. Level, 180. Title, the strongest jujutsu sorcerer. The honored one, six eyes and limitless user. Job, jujutsu sorcerer. Health, 240,000. C, 100,000. Strength, 180. Vitality, 240. Agility, 200. Intelligence, 190. Sense, 300. I couldn't believe my eyes as I read Satoru Gojo's stats. He was on an entirely different level, his power dwarfing mine by an unimaginable degree. I struggled to maintain my composure, trying not to appear too shocked. What do you want with me? I asked cautiously, wondering why someone of his incredible strength would be interested in me. You are very unique, and I would like for you to join Jujutsu High, Gojo replied with enthusiasm. Jujutsu what? I questioned, my confusion evident. It's a place that can help you become stronger, he explained cheerfully. I couldn't help but feel skeptical. I have a feeling you're not telling me everything. Why would I lie to you? Gojo appeared slightly offended by my suspicion. 
I maintained my stoic expression and countered. I think you're the type of person who might pester me until I say yes. How did you know? Gojo asked, appearing somewhat taken aback. Fine, but can I have a month to think it over? I requested. After a brief moment of consideration, Gojo agreed, all right, that seems fair. But first, let me see your abilities. A new quest notification appeared. New quest, fight Gojo. Description, you encountered the strongest jujutsu sorcerer, and he wants to assess your abilities. Impress him. Rewards, new skill, 5000 EXP, skill stone. May I test them on you? I inquired, not wanting to risk injuring anyone else. Please, try, Gojo said with an eager smile. I retrieved my poisonous dagger from my inventory and activated mana enhancement and ogre necklace. With a burst of speed, I dashed toward Gojo, attempting to strike him. However, my blade seemed to meet an invisible barrier, causing me to jump back. What was that? I asked in astonishment. I continued to use my teleportation skill, dashing and teleporting around Gojo while maintaining mana enhancement. I moved so swiftly that it should have been challenging for anyone to track me, but Gojo effortlessly danced around my attacks. Every time I attempted to strike, he dodged effortlessly. It felt like my attacks were never even coming close to connecting. Frustrated, I decided to prepare my purification ball. My mana was draining rapidly due to mana enhancement, but I didn't care. Finally, I launched my attack at full power, creating a massive crack in the floor. The explosive force was akin to being hit by a tank shell at point-blank range. It felt like I had broken through Gojo's defenses, but I jumped back. Gojo seemed unfazed and even excited. This is so interesting, he remarked. I couldn't help but express my frustration. You must have been hurt by that, right? How are you still unharmed? Your attack was rather weak, Gojo replied with a smile. I muttered in annoyance, but it was clear that Gojo was immensely stronger than me. One day, I'll defeat you, I declared, likening him to a smug Kakashi. Gojo, though initially irritated, chuckled at my comment. You can try, but beating me is impossible, he retorted. Satisfied that I had shown him my abilities, I asked for my month's reprieve. Gojo agreed, vanishing before my eyes. A quest completion notification appeared. Quest, fight Gojo has been completed. Description, you encountered the strongest jujutsu sorcerer, and he wanted to assess your abilities. You impressed him. You gained a new skill, Mata Punch. You gained 5000 EXP. You have leveled up. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 12. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 1805. MP, 1180. Strength, 47. Vitality, 27. Agility, 21. Intelligence, 21. Sense, 21. Remaining points, 36. Gold, 2000. I heaved a heavy sigh as I looked at my level up. This encounter had made me painfully aware of my own limitations in this world. I had a long way to go. I decided to use the coming month to prepare myself for whatever challenges the life of a jujutsu sorcerer might throw at me. Returning home, I locked the door behind me and devoted myself to intense hand-to-hand -hand combat training. After several hours, I completed my daily regimen. A short time later, I crushed the mana stone I had found earlier. Skill, gravity manipulation has been gained. I stared at my status in amazement. Controlling gravity around my body was an incredible ability. Time to put in the grind. I told myself as I set a goal to reach at least level 20 by the end of the month. Realizing that this would require some sacrifices, I decided that skipping a few classes was a necessity. Time skip a month. You have killed the chief of the ogre. You gain 14,000. You gain 2,000 gold. You have leveled up. Button. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 20. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player. HP, 2645. MP, 2020. Strength, 55. Vitality, 35. Agility, 29. Intelligence, 29. Sense, 29. Remaining points, 44 plus 60. Gold, 50,000 gold. I looked down at the body of the ogre chief that I had just killed and then walked through the portal as I had looted everything. I jumped off the pile of bodies that I was standing on before I jumped off the pile of bodies and walked through the portal for real this time. I breathed in deeply as I appeared back in my room and it looked like it was nighttime. I felt refreshed as I got out and looked around my house but before I could even as much as take a shower. Quest created. The King of Curse Return. Description. The King of the Curse Ryoman Sukuna who died a thousand years ago and transcended death as his finger became a curse object has now returned. Stop him. Beat 5% power Sukuna. Rewards. 10,000 exp. 2,000 gold. Unique skill. You will become a jujutsu sorcerer. Yes or no? I smiled at the notification before I accepted it and suddenly felt something coming from my high school. 
and so I dashed there at full speed. Time skip. Pov change. I arrived at my high school and saw a teenager with pink hair trapped in the grip of a grade 2 curse. The curse had its finger in the teenager's mouth, seemingly trying to kill him. The teenager threw the finger into the air and swallowed it as it landed. An explosive surge of power emanated from his body, and strange markings appeared all over his body. The curse spirit ran toward the teenager, attempting to kill him. However, the teenager, now covered in black marks all over his body, simply raised his hands into the air, and the curse was cut into pieces. Oh, I knew it light is best appreciated in the flesh, the teenage boy with a black mark on his body said as he ripped out his clothes. Where are the people? Where are the women? He said walking toward the ledge of the building. He then looked at the ledge before a smile appeared on his face. What a wonderful age, women and children spawning in like maggots, he said getting excited. Marvelous, this will be a massacre, he said with a smile on his face and with his hand near his chest. Before he had time to do anything though, he got punched in the face and was sent flying a couple of feet back. The teenager stood back up and dusted himself like he didn't take that much damage. He looked up and saw the person who dared to hit the King of Curse and he saw a teenager with black hair and blue eyes looking at him. Something was weird about him though as the King of Curses couldn't feel an ounce of curse energy flowing to the kid. It was either this man never felt any negative emotion in his life or he had zero curse energy. He was a bit surprised but he knew that the punch that the kid landed on him was boosted by something and it wasn't curse energy. It was something else. Pov change. Guess I was a bit late but let's get this over with. I said to myself as I seemed to vanish from my spot and reappeared behind the teenager before I kicked him away. Interesting. He said as his eyes seemed to be keeping up with me. I wasn't giving him any time to react and just continued to pummel on him. But something felt off. It seemed like he was letting me hit him. I went for his head before he put his hands up and said yao chill. His voice was a bit different from when he was talking about slaughtering women and children like maggots. It seemed more like Yuji, so I stopped. Oh, it's you, I said as I now fully recognized the pink-haired boy. The one and only he responded smiling. Don't move, a black-haired boy said to Yuji and seemed to be completely ignoring my presence. Ha, huh? Itadori said confused. Under Jujutsu regulation, I will exercise the curse known as Yuji Itadori, the black-haired teen said while forming some sort of hand. Quest? The King of Curse return has been completed. Description The King of the Curse Ryoman Sukuna who died a thousand years ago and transcended death as his finger became a curse object has now returned. Stop him. Eat 5% power Sukuna. Rewards You gain 7000 exp. You gain 2000 gold. You gain a unique skill, the zone. Description When in the zone, you become more focused and all of your stats will increase by 150% of their original value. Inside this state is where the impossible becomes possible, and you will be more likely to perform skills that you are not able to do before with near-perfect mastery. I could see the marks on his body disappearing as the black-haired kid seemed to be serious about his earlier threat. Suddenly a familiar white-haired man appeared and the black-haired kid said Gojo-sensei, what are you doing here? I was a bit confused as I couldn't believe this childish man was a sensei to anyone. He then noticed me before he appeared in front of me instantly. Kenzo sen you here he said as he hugged me. I had a look on my face that said what the fuck was happening. He then pulled away with tears in his eyes saying I went to your house to see if you were there and you were gone. I thought you ran away from me. Is this guy alright in the head I thought to myself before I just sighed and said. No, I just felt a sudden burst of power near the school and I just ran there to see what was wrong. After my explanation was done he looked at the black haired kid and said where is the cursed object. The teen had a weird look on his face before Yuji said I ate it. For real, he said to the teen. For real, Yuji replied. He then got very close to Yuji before he looked like he was examining him before a smile appeared on his face and he said haha, you guys fused, so how does your body feel? I feel alright, Yuji said checking out his body. Can you switch with Sukuna? Gojo said starting to stretch. Sukuhu, Yuji said confused. The curse object you ate, he said looking at Yuji. Probably, Yuji said. Then take control after 10 seconds, Gojo said. I don't know about this Yuji said unsure. Don't worry about it, I'm the strongest Gojo said with a smile as he was done stretching. Megumi hold this will ya he said tossing the bag to the black haired teen. So his name is Megumi thought to myself. I then watched as Gojo fought with Sukuna for 10 seconds. It wasn't really a fight just him showing off but hey I did manage to see an amazing sight. When Yuji switched back, Gojo walked near him before he poked him in the forehead causing Yuji to pass out. That was a sight to behold, I said to no one in particular. Hold up how do you know my name? I said to Gojo as I realized I never gave this man my name. 
secrets he replied playfully. I just saw a bit annoyed before I looked at him with a defeated face. Oh by the way here is your uniform. He said throwing me some clothes. I opened the shirt to see it had a good and some pockets in the front while the pants were just black pants with pockets. I never accepted your invitation. I said looking at Gojo. You never said no? He said with a smile. Fine. I said putting the clothes back into my inventory and he seemed surprised at the fact that my clothes just disappeared. I could see that he was clearly interested in how I made the clothes disappear. Instead of answering him, I equipped them, and the clothes I was currently wearing vanished into thin air, replaced by a new school uniform. It fits, I said as I looked at my clothes. No, I will not tell you how that happened, I said to Gojo as I saw he was about to open his mouth. Rude much, he said to me before he looked back at Megumi and said, Megumi this is your new classmate Kenzo, Kenzo this is Megumi, Gojo said and I just said. Nice to meet you. I then asked him for a map of where Jujutsu High is and he gave it to me while pointing at a general location and saying somewhere around there. Time skipped the next day. This motherfucker I said as I was now in the middle of nowhere and now realized that Gojo gave me a map of Japan and just pointed somewhere and told me that where they are. The day that I get my hands on this man is the day that I will beat his ass, I said to myself as I put the map down. I then ran on the general direction of where he said Jujutsu High was. Time skipped three hours. The figure of a white-haired man and pink-haired teenager that looked very happy. They were also a gloomy black-haired teen with them. Gojo-sensei, which map did you give him? Megumi said after a while. The map of Japan of course, Gojo said like it was the easier thing in the world. A look of why would you do this to him was plastered on Megumi's face while Gojo still had a goofy smile on his face. I think that him, Yuji said pointing toward the teenager that was running towards them. He seemed a bit infuriated and as soon as he got in range Gojo said Kenzo-kun why are you so late as soon as those words left his mouth. A punch stopped literally inches away from his fist as cracks formed where he stood. That is not a great way to greet your sensei, Gojo said acting hurt. You gave me a map of Japan and just pointed somewhere randomly. How did you expect me to find this place? I said a bit mad but I cooled off pretty quickly as the effect of my power kicked in. You found it though, so no need crying over some spilled milk he said with a smile. And I just sight. How can someone be like that? Is he okay in the head? You are a real pain in the ass you know that? I said looking at him. He just smiled while I just started to just talk with Yuji and Megumi as I didn't want to spend the time we were walking on being mad at Gojo. Anyway, you will probably have to talk with Principal Yaga, Gojo said with a smile. What about we do that after we go to Tokyo? I said a bit less tense. Nice, Gojo said and I now just realized that this man had never removed his blindfold this whole time. Kenzo how did you manage to move so fast? Itadori asked curiously. I used mana I answer bluntly and at those words I could clearly see that Gojo curiosity was peak and Yuji seemed more curious. You don't use curse energy Yuji said a bit confused. Oh you mean the energy curse are formed from? No I don't use it matter of fact. I don't think my body even has a splitter of it in it I said honestly. Would you mind showing us what is mana? Gojo asked. Yes yeah, sure I don't see why. I said as I formed a purification ball in my hands and showed it to them. It seems calmer than curse energy and a lot purer Gojo added before I stopped sending mana to my hands causing the ball to disappear. That is not nice Kenzo-kun. Gojo said sounding like, I was an adult that stole away a toy that he wanted to play with and experience with. I just smile happy that I managed to annoy Gojo. Although it was only slightly I did manage to annoy the strongest jujutsu sorcerer alive so that should count for something. As we continued to walk I decided to see how strong everyone around me was and so I used my skill on Megumi. Name, Megumi Fushiguro. Level, 17. Fatigue, full. Job, Jujutsu Sorcerer. Titles, The Genius, 10 Shadow Technique Wielder, Grade 2. HP, 600. C 700. Strength, 13 Vitality, 16. Agility, 20 Intelligence, 35. Sense, 18. I then used it on Yuji to see his stats. Name, Itadori Yuji. Level, 18. Fatigue, full. Job, Jujutsu Sorcerer. Titles, Sukuna Vessel, The Perfect Vessel. HP, 17-0. C 200. Strength, 37 Vitality, 27. Agility, 37 Intelligence, 7. Sense, 9. I was a bit shocked to see the question mark but I calmed myself down and just relaxed the whole way through the journey. Time skip. Who are we waiting for exactly Yuji said after a while of waiting. Yeah, who are we waiting for exactly I thought to myself. We are waiting for your fourth classmate and teammate Gojo said happily. I then noticed a girl talking to a man about modeling and noticed that her energy seemed higher than everyone around and pointed her while saying. Is that her? Yes, good job Kenzo, Gojo said energetically. Time skip. 
the name Nobara Kujisaki and you guys are pretty lucky to hang around a girl like me she said introducing herself. I'm Yuji Itadori and I'm from Sendai, Yuji said introducing himself. Megumi Fushiguro, Megumi said introducing himself. Her eyes then landed on me before I said Kenzo Tatsuo. She seemed to be gazing at us and seemed to be judging us before she let out it could have been worse. I then turned toward Gojo and asked where are we going now that we got our last classmate. You guys seem to be new to Tokyo so why not have a tour of Tokyo he said looking at the sky and I just had this look on my face that called BS. There is no way this man would do this, this is probably one of his many trolls. I watch Yuji and Nobara excitement as I stayed on the sideline watching them act like actual children. They even got on their knees for Gojo waiting for him to announce where we would go first. Time skip. Nobody though to myself as I saw the building we were standing in front of, I could hear the disappointment in Yuji and Nobara voice in the background, while Megumi was talking to Gojo. Megumi then began to explain what a cursed spirit is to Yuji and how the fear of human play a major roles in it. I want to see what you guy are capable of, Nobara, Yuji the two of you get in this building and exercise the cursed spirit, Gojo said to them. Gojo then handed Yuji a curse tool so he could finally exercise some curses. So why am I here exactly, I said pointing to myself. You here is moral support, he said with a smile while my eyebrow just twitched slightly. I then pulled out a health potion from my inventory before I threw it at Megumi. He caught while saying what for. It will heal your injury just drink it I said to him. Gojo I seem like he saw something exciting. Megumi drinks it after 10 or so seconds and as soon as he did that all his wounds were healed and he no longer needs the bandage. What was that he said looking at me? A healing pot I answer softly. What is your curse technique exactly if you don't mind me asking Gojo said curiously. What is your curse technique and I will tell you mine I said looking at the blindfolded man. It the limitless which allow me to make an infinite barrier between me and my opponent. The infinite allow me to manipulate space and time and create. He said as he fully explained his technique but I did not fully listen to everything as I just got the basic gist of it. I then looked at Megumi before he explained his ability to me. So that what the 10 shadow technique holder titles was about I thought to myself. We told you our technique then what is your Gojo said curiously. I can control gravity. So far I have figured out that I can make stuff heavier or lighter. I can make someone float. And with practice, I think I can pull and push people toward me. If I gain enough control, I could probably learn how to fly it is pretty versatile. And apart from the drain on my mana, it is pretty easy to control I explained my ability. Interesting. Gojo said looking at me like he had just found someone with the potential to rival him. Is there a limit on how much gravity you can add onto someone before you reach your limits? Megumi asked looking at me. It used my mana, so the more I use it the more mana it consumes, I said looking at Megumi. Have you tried to lower your own gravity? Megumi asked. I did and I accidentally lowered it too far and a gust of wind sent me flying. I answer honestly before I notice a curse trying to escape from the house. And before I try to kill it, it dies. Heh, guess that's gone, I said looking at the curse's body. Nobara and Yuji came out of the house relatively unscathed but I could still feel Gojo staring at the back of my head like he felt like there was more to my power other than just gravity manipulation. Time skip a few weeks. You have leveled up. Button. Name Kenzo Tatsu. Level. 25. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The Player. Jujutsu Sorcerer. HP. 3170. MP. 2545. Strength. 60. Vitality. 40. Agility. 34. Intelligence. 34. Sense. 34. Remaining points. 49 plus 60. Gold. 59,000 gold. I walked out the dungeon gate before I watched myself in the bath. After taking a bath, I heard somebody knocking on my door, and I opened the door. I see Megumi, Itadori, and Nobara behind the door. Why are all three of you guys here today? I said looking at them. We got a new mission so get ready, Megumi said and I nodded before closing the door and switching my clothes using my inventory before I opened the door back up in my uniform. Then let's go, I said as I walked out. How did he do that? Nobara asked as she could not believe how someone could dress so fast. Secrets, I said as I followed behind Megumi. As we walked Yuji looked at me and said, Is it just me or did you get stronger? He said looking at me. You can tell, I said looking at him and he nodded. I then realized that my mana had been leaking out of my body and so he must have felt my power increase as my mana increased. And so while we were walking, I found a way to stop my mana from leaking. Time skip to when we arrive. Our window confirms it was a curse womb three hours ago. A man who looked in his thirty said, Five inmates are trapped in there and the curse womb that grows and changes shape can be expected to become a curse close to special grade the man explained. What a special grade, I and Yuji said at the same time. 
The man then pulled a chart and I now realize that as I currently stand, I would probably get wrecked by a special grade so I decided to finally use some of my points. Better be safe than sorry. Name, Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 25. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player, Jujutsu Sorcerer. HP, 3170. MP, 2545. Strength, 60 plus 20 vitality, 40. Agility, 34 plus 20 intelligence, 34 plus 6. Sense, 34 plus 3. Yeah. Remaining points, 49 minus 49 plus 60. Gold, 59,000 gold. And after putting my stats point in, my stats now look like this. Name Kenzo Tatsu. Level, 5. Fatigue, full. Job, N.A. Titles, The Player, Jujutsu Sorcerer. HP, 3170. Yeah. MP, 2545. Strength, 80 Vitality, 40. Agility, 54 Intelligence, 40. Sense, 37. Yeah. Remaining points, 0 plus 60. Gold, 59,000 gold. When confronted by a special grade the only option is to run or to die, the man said to us one last time. A lady was talking about how her son was stuck in there and she begged us to make sure he was fine while Yuji just said that he would save him. I'm going to lower the curtain be careful and good luck, the man said before he did a weird hand sign with his hand and started to say. Emerge from darkness, blacker than darkness, purify that which is impure. A weird black seal started to show and it started to cover the sky. As soon as the curtain appeared Megumi made a hand sign before he summoned a divine dog. Yuji seems to enjoy petting the dog along with Nobara while I just continue to watch. Megumi the door is gone. I said to the only member of this team that had functioning brain cells. He noticed it before he looked around as if something was off. He then summoned his dog and said he will lead us to the exit. Nobara and Itadori seem to love the dog and I wonder why. It's here and it is watching us, I said to Megumi and he immediately got on guard. For some reason though, it is not attacking, I said as I noticed the curse was just watching us. Megumi seems to still be on guard as he finally starts to walk forward. We arrived in a room where we saw the defiled body of a lot of people and this seemed to have hit Yuji hard. I put my hands on his shoulder before I said he is dead Yuji, why are you still trying to take his body? His mother at least deserves to see his body. He said and to that I just sight and said even though he was a dick, I will do this as a small favor for you. I then put the body in my inventory and got up. Yuji and Nobara seemed to be confused about where the body was while I just said I stored it. I suddenly disappeared before I appeared behind Nobara as she was getting pulled into some sort of portal while I just held her. The hole then disappeared as I dropped her. Thank you she said after she noticed that I had just saved her from falling into a strange hole. And I just said you welcome. Megumi does your dog love to stick its head into a rock? I asked the boy. What kind of stupid question is that? He asked as he summoned new. Because this one is doing it. I said pointing toward the dog in the wall and he seemed surprised before a scared look appeared on his face. I then vanished from my spot as I landed a punch on the cursed spirit head, sending him flying a couple of meters away. You dealt 200 critical damage. Everybody looked stunned as they finally realized what I just punched away. Kenzo I heard Megumi shout and I look at him before I fell down a hole instantly and appeared in a room full of faces. I then saw the cursed spirit inside the room before I just said, I don't have time for any of you guys as I pulled my dual sharp daggers from my inventory. I then used my power over gravity to make the curses way heavier before I started to kill them all one by one. You killed a grade 3 curse you gained 200 exp. You killed. You killed. I suddenly felt a huge power spike coming from Yuji and I immediately ran toward him hoping everything would be fine. I finally appeared where I sensed Yuji to see Yuji eating a finger that he had just taken from the curse and swallowing it. The black markings on his body were a dead giveaway on who was in control right now. New quest created, beat three finger Sukuna. Description, due to your poor decision making skills your classmates were cornered by the special grade and your friend Yuji was forced into switching with Sukuna it is now your time to fix your mess. Rewards, 17,000 exp, three high grade health potion. The quest was immediately accepted as Sukuna looked at me and smiled deviously. You've gotten stronger since last time. Let's see if it is enough to beat the king of all curses, Sukuna said challenging me and I immediately rushed at him and started slashing him over and over again. You dealt 150 damage. Your opponent has healed. I kick him away and he was sent flying. I rushed at him and went for an attack on his chest and as he was about to block, I used my gravity technique and made sure that he was now feeling some heavy gravity on him. He could now move and so I used this opportunity to keep fighting him. He baited me and before he kicked me away sending me flying to a few buildings. You take 300 damage. I just stood back up and rushed back at him again continuing the fight like nothing ever happened. 
I started infusing my body with mana as I kept coming back at him. The more we fought the more I realized why this man was called the king of a curse as this man had some power even if he was at 15% of his full power. I did not fully go all out however as Yuji may switch back at any moment and if I was aiming to kill him that would have been bad. I however was pushed to my limits as he noticed that I was now going for any killing blow, and he mocked me for that. I gritted my teeth as I went at him again. As I was five feet away from him I disappeared from his sight as I plunged my blade deep into his heart, and the second I did that, Yuji switched back with him and I just stood there. Yuji, I said as I noticed the mark starting to disappear from his body, fuck I killed Yuji. Quest beat three fingers Sukuna has been completed. You gain 17,000 exp. You level up. You gain 5 high-grade health potions. You gain. Name Kenzo Tatsu. Level. Keycap 2 Keycap 6. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The Player. Jujutsu Sorcerer. HP. Keycap 3 Keycap 2 Keycap 7 Keycap 5. MP. Keycap 2 Keycap 6 Keycap 5 Keycap 0. Strength. Keycap 8 Keycap 1 Vitality. Keycap 4 Keycap 1. Agility, Keycap 5, Keycap 5, Intelligence, Keycap 4, Keycap 1, Sense, Keycap 3, Keycap 8, Remaining Points, Keycap 5 plus Keycap 6, Keycap 0, Gold, 59,000 Gold. I did not care that my stats increased but I was worried about Yuji and in my worry. I pulled out a high grade health potion and tried to feed him but Sukuna was interfering with it and I could not make Yuji drink the portion without actually feeding it to Sukuna instead. How does it feel to kill your friend? A good friend you are, Sukuna said mocking me as I held Itadori's lifeless body. I was speechless and I had no words. The guilt was eating me up and I had no way to get rid of it. There are still 17 fingers of this monster left so even if Yuji dies it's not like I got rid of him. Time skipped the next day. I was sitting on the stairs thinking of what I did yesterday, and the guilt started to eat me back up inside. I then heard a lot of noise before I looked up and saw a green-haired girl looking at us while saying what is this mood a funeral. A panda then told her that a freshman had died and she yelled you made me look like a cold-hearted demon. You are, the panda said while the small boy said tuna, mayo. Who are those people Nobara asked. Our upperclassman Megumi said. This is Zenin Senpai and there is no better curse tool user than her, he said pointing toward the green-haired girl. And this is Panda Senpai, he said introducing the panda. Akatsu Senpai is not here right now but he is the only one that sincerely respects and he is abroad right now, Megumi said. The panda apologized for coming at a bad time before he said we want you guys to participate in the Kyoto Goodwill event. We got a basic summary of it with was it was a two-day exam and each principal got to choose the exam of one day. It was basically a battle royal where no killing was allowed. And that was the only rule, 85% of this curse still exists, and in honor of Itadori I will find him and I will kill this bastard even if it's the last thing I do. I mean, I said after pondering for a while, but I will train on my own. If you guys don't mind, I said getting up and stretching myself. I will however need to get better at my weapon handling and as Megumi said you are the best tool user, I would like to train with you, I said looking at Maki. Don't blame me when you get beat up, she said and I just nodded while saying I won't. Time skip a month. You have level up. Name Kenzo Tatsu. Level. Keycap 3 Keycap 0. Fatigue. Full. Job. N.A. Titles. The Player. Jujutsu Sorcerer. HP. Keycap 3 Keycap 6 Keycap 9 Keycap 5. MP. Keycap 3 Keycap 0 Keycap 7 Keycap 0. Strength. Keycap 8 Keycap 5 Vitality. Keycap 4 Keycap 5. Agility, Keycap 6, Keycap 0, Intelligence, Keycap 4, Keycap 5, Sense, Keycap 4, Keycap 2, Remaining Points, Keycap 2, Keycap 0, Plus Keycap 1, Keycap 2, Keycap 0, Gold, Keycap 7, Keycap 2, Keycap 0, Keycap 0, Keycap 0. I slowly got out of the dungeon as I had cleared it, and that was the exp the boss gave me and so after I cleared the dungeon, I walked out and appeared in my room. I then took a bath before I changed into training clothes where I then walked outside and joined the others in their training. I was starting to believe you wouldn't come today, Mackie said as she noticed me. Today training just took a lot longer than I had expected. I said truthfully as those ogres were stronger than I had expected them to be. Megumi looked at me and he seemed to have noticed my increase in power and he said nothing about it. I hope you don't make an excuse about you being weakened when I beat you, Mackie said as she took out a curse tool. Even when I'm sore, I will still be able to beat you, I said taunting her. I pulled out my daggers before I rushed in and started to fight with Mackie. I held back my power by a lot and I even did not use my gravity control as I wanted to actually want to learn the proper movement and not just swing around my blade for no real reason. I play kept switching from defense to attack and because I didn't actually want to hurt her, 
I used a wooden dagger and used mana to make sure it didn't break if it got hit too hard. She jumped over one of my attacks and when I tried to get her when she landed, she dropped into a slip. You are very flexible I commented before I went back to attacking. Time skip. As Emi, Megumi, and Nobara went out to get some drink, we soon met two people, a very buff and tall man, and a green-haired girl. Why are you here Zenin Senpai Megumi said to the girl. Oh Fushiguro is that how you call Maki? Call me Mai she said. So these are the replacement for Akasu in the third year the buff man said. We heard your classmate, or must have been tough Mai said. What are you getting and I said a bit pissed off. Vessel sounds harmless but he was just a half curse monster. Such a vile facade for a human was calling himself a jujutsu sorcerer alongside you. It must have been terrible, Mai said looking at us. You guys must be relieved that he is dead, Mai said. I controlled my anger and did not let it slip while the buff man in the front just looked at me and said you seem like the stronger of the two. What is your name he said looking at me. Kenzo I reply bluntly. Kenzo, what kind of women do you like he said with a serious look on his face. Depending on your answer I might beat you half to death and drag Okutsu back here, he said as he removed his jacket. By the way, I like tall girls with big butts, he said looking very demonic. What kind of question is that? And even if I had an answer why would I share it with a complete stranger? I said a bit perplexed at the man with a question. Kyoto third year, AI to do, now that the introduction is over and we are friends, hurry up and answer my question. It can even be a guy the man now known as to do said. A person's taste reveals everything about them and a boring guy has boring taste. I don't like boring guys to do explained. And while he did that, I examined him. Name AI to do. Level, 50. Fatigue, full. Job, Jujutsu Sorcerer. Titles, Grade 1. HP, 5250. C, 2000. Strength, 69. Vitality, 50. Agility, 50. Intelligence, 90. Sense, 60. He is probably the strongest one for Kyoto and if his stats are a basis for me to go off, I would say that Grade 1 sits around level 45 to somewhere around 60 or 75 at the highest I thought to myself. Now tell me what kind of girl you like before I break your bones. He said looking at me and I just let out a chuckle. Let's just say a girl with an athletic physique. I also don't like when people beat around the bush so if she was straightforward I would like that and that's all I'm willing to share with you. Basically a tall girl with a fat ass I reply looking at him. You are not as boring as you look, to do said and that caused my eyes to twitch a bit by his comments but I said nothing else. He then asked Megumi the same question and he responded that he liked a girl who had a good personality and I saw Todo cry a bit while saying this. Damn, you are boring as shit he then proceeded to rush at Megumi and push him away. Isn't this a bit over the top? I said looking at how one side this was. Also Mai or whatever your name is, put that gun away from Nobara, I said looking at Mai. Don't worry about me, go help Fushigoro. He is getting his ass beat Nobara said and I nodded to that. I rushed toward the battlefield before I kicked Todo away as he was trying to pummel Megumi. Yeah, I'm not letting you beat up Megumi like that even if by your standard his taste is as tasteless as water, I said looking at Todo. He got back up and removed the blood that I was dropping down his lips as he smiled and said so this school does have someone that can put up a fight. The world is full of secrets I just replied while looking at him. He just smiled as he rushed toward me and started to attack me which I either dodged or blocked. I was about to go for the chance to just straight up beat his ass but as soon as I launched my punch, I heard Inumaki's voice for the first time ever while he said don't move and that kind of shocked me a little as I slowed down my fist till it was an inch away from his face. Todo and Panda were arguing against each other while I just went to Megumi to check if he was okay. You alright there you seem a bit beat up, I said looking at him. I'm fine. He said standing up and I just chuckled as I realized that he just got beat up for his taste in women being complete garbage. What was that hand sign you were doing I asked wondering which Shikigami he was going to summon. He did not answer and for some reason, I had the urge to laugh a bit. I don't know why but something about this situation made it funny. It felt like he was going to summon a very strong Shinigami that he hasn't tamed yet, just because he was going to get his ass beat. I really hope this is not the reason because if it was this would be hilarious. I, however, calmed down and just looked at him while saying you need a health potion or the beat down hasn't really affected you I said looking at him. I'm fine. He said repeating the same words as before as I just shrug and just walk away. I have some better stuff to do as of today. Grinding dungeon is fine and all but as of right now, I confidently could say I could take a special grade course. I could also say with full confidence that I am the strongest first year in this school and I may be stronger than most sorcerers. I however have a long way to go if I want to get stronger than that white-haired man. I am still very salty about that time when he gave me a map of Japan and made me run so much to find Jujutsu High. 
or the fact that as soon as he realized that I could store a lot in my inventory, I kind of became the person he gave hold of his sweets or clothes that he had just dried and cleaned. Time skip. Nobara where are you going with all that luggage I said looking at Nobara as she was carrying around a bag full of what I could presume were clothes. We going to the Goodwill event in Kyoto, Nobara said. From what I gather from asking some questions, the event will be played here as this school won last year, I said looking at her. Why did we have to go and win she said clearly annoyed and I couldn't stop myself from finding her temper and her reaction was just fun to watch. We did not even participate. Panda said and to that, I just looked at him confused and Mackie elaborated by saying it was a one-sided massacre, and as Yuta still had Rika, it was fast. Nobara started to yell on about how she was going to beat up Yuta because he was the reason she didn't want to get to travel this year. They hear, Panda said as I turned my head toward where the Kyoto High students were coming from. I saw six people walking toward us, they were three girls one of whom was Mai and two dudes with one of them being to do. There was also a robot there and because it was mostly a thing I didn't know whether to call him a boy or a girl as he was just a robot. We're okay, Todo said sounding disappointed. Is this a welcome party? Gross the robot said. Shut up and hand over the souvenirs, Nobara said while Inumaki was just naming out ingredients which caused Todo to ask him if he was hungry. It seemed like a fight was going to start as a lot of bad mouthing was happening. No fighting. A female voice said to which I followed to see a girl with long hair wearing Japanese-style clothing with a scar that started from her cheek and stopped a bit after passing her nose. Anyways where that idiot she asked. Satoru is late, Panda said while scratching his chin. No way that idiot is ever on time. Maki said bluntly, she seemed to be used to this kind of habit coming from Gojo. She didn't even mention his name. Megumi said a tiny bit stunned. Here I am, Gojo said appearing while pushing a cart. Kenzo could feel something coming from that cart, something very familiar to him in a way. Gojo then started to distribute souvenirs to everyone, spreading a cheerful atmosphere. He eventually appeared in front of Kenzo and greeted him with a sly smile, saying, How is my favorite porter doing? My eyes twitched involuntarily at that comment, but I managed to control myself and remain composed. And for the Tokyo kids, Gojo announced, a mischievous glint in his eye as he playfully lifted the cart's lid. Out of the cart sprang Yuji, appearing not a day worse for wear despite his recent absence. It's the nearly departed Yuji, Gojo declared, his hand pointing directly at the astonished boy. With a grin as wide as the horizon, Yuji quipped back, ha, gotcha. The shock of his sudden reappearance was replaced by the thrill of seeing his friend once more, and it was evident that he had undergone some profound changes in his time away. I could sense the weight of experience and the residue of newfound power emanating from him. It was clear that Yuji had taken the opportunity of his absence to hone his abilities further. While my astonishment and relief at Yuji's return were palpable, my attention was diverted when an elderly voice rang out in the midst of the jubilation. Sukuna Vessel, what is this? The voice belonged to Principal Gaku Ganji, a dignified figure of authority. Gojo, who had been preoccupied with Yuji's arrival, swiveled around to face the principal. Principal Gaku Ganji, thank goodness, he exclaimed, his charismatic charm now directed towards the man of authority. The principal's question seemed to hint at his awareness of the significant events that had unfolded in Yuji's absence. Good thing the shock didn't kill you. I was worried, Gojo added, leaning in closely to the principal's face in a very disrespectful tone. You brat, the old man said clearly pissed. As Principal Gaku Ganji's voice rang out with a tone of displeasure, it became clear that Gojo's cheeky demeanor had perhaps pushed the boundaries a bit too far. The elderly figure appeared frustrated with the unexpected turn of events, and his facial expressions were anything but joyful. Gojo, still sporting a sly grin, seemed to pay little heed to the principal's irritation. In fact, he reveled in it, embracing the tension with the audacity that had become his trademark. He turned away from the elderly figure and then shifted his attention toward me. There, the surprise etched on Gojo's face couldn't have been more evident. It was as if he had stumbled upon an unexpected revelation. Kenzo-kun, he chimed with amusement in his voice. He reached into his attire and retrieved an object, which he extended towards me with a friendly smile. It was the ID card he had apparently promised me two months ago but never delivered. His expression, now, was a mix of surprise and contentment, as if he had just unearthed a long-lost treasure. Receiving the long-awaited ID card from Gojo's outstretched hand, I did so with a noticeable lack of gratitude. There was a clear air of exasperation lingering in my demeanor, a testament to my growing irritation. I refused to offer even a simple thank you. Gojo, ever the provocateur, seemed to relish in my response. He adopted a mockingly hurt tone, 
his tone dripping with facetiousness. So mean, he crooned, feigning the role of the injured party. Unmoved, I maintained an icy facade. My resolve was unshaken. I wasn't about to provide him the satisfaction of knowing that he had managed to elicit any emotional reaction from me. This bastard wouldn't get shit from me. Time skip. Tokyo team meeting. Yuji clung to a set of oversized frames, with his head comically framed right in the center, resembling a peculiar living painting. A wave of harsh reprimand had engulfed him. I couldn't help but privately sympathize with Yuji's predicament. As I watched the scene unfold, a thought emerged in my mind, echoing my internal sentiments. This punishment seems somewhat excessive. After all, he did explain himself. Panda, ever the voice of reason, seemed to share my reservations. He openly expressed his disapproval, asserting that Yuji's initial explanation should suffice. In response to the criticism, Yuji, stuck in his bizarre contraption, offered only a succinct, almost cryptic response, it talks. The choice of words only deepened the oddity of the situation. Toad's response was succinct, salmon. Oddly, I somehow grasped that he was in agreement with Panda's sentiment. Yuji's brow furrowed in bewilderment, prompting Megumi to step in and provide context. Unyumaki is a cursed speech user. He possesses the ability to manipulate the spiritual energy within certain words. However, to use this power, he's constrained to a limited vocabulary. Panda chimed in to add further detail his words revealing the complexities of Inumaki's ability. The scope of the command matters. The larger the word's spiritual impact, the greater the strain on Inumaki. In the worst-case scenario, the word might recoil, harming him instead. The explanation helped shed light on Inumaki's unique curse technique. Nobara expressed her frustration by saying, revealing the secret of someone like that. Maki chimed in, offering some reassurance, it's not much of an issue for Toj. He operates on a completely different level. Then, with a serious tone, she fixed her gaze on Yuji and said, Give back demon slaughter. Yuji's face displayed a mixture of shock and dismay, and after a moment, he spoke firmly, Gojo Sensei has it. His words hinted at the gravity of the situation. Somewhere else on the campus, Gojo had sneezed. A new quest popped up, and it read, New quest created, beat the Kyoto school. Description, the goodwill event is starting. To prove your strength and demonstrate you're not weak, defeat the Kyoto students. Rewards. 5,000 exp. Mid-level mana recovery potions. Do you accept this quest? Yes or no? My attention went to the floating screen in front of me as I read the quest description before I pressed yes. This probably wouldn't level me up as I need like 30k exp to level up, but it should give me a much needed boost towards that. Sorry about that. I said, looking at Yuji, and he seemed confused before a look of recognition appeared on his face as he said, don't worry about it. We already have a strategy set up, and with one more person, that complicates things, Mackie said. Confusion washed over my face as I interjected. Wait, you made a strategy, but I didn't hear any of them. And whose fault is that? She shot back, her eyes narrowing in my direction. I simply shrugged in response. I mean, it's yours. You're the one in charge, so it should be your responsibility to make sure everyone is informed of the plan, I said, offering a defense. Her annoyance was evident as she hurled her staff at me, but I managed to catch it with ease. You have a real talent for annoying me, Mackie said, clearly vexed. It just means Gojo's personality is starting to rub off on me, I replied casually, tossing her weapon back. She sighed deeply, then proceeded to explain the strategy. I paid close attention to every word. I was determined to understand exactly what each person's role would be. Meanwhile where the Kyoto team was located, the atmosphere in the room remained charged with determination. The old man's words resonated with a sense of unwavering resolve. Kill Sukuna's vessel, Yuji Itadori, he declared, his tone leaving no room for hesitation. Do not think of the target as human. We will handle it and ensure it appears as an unfortunate incident. There's no need for restraint. My, a member of the team, responded casually, we're going to kill him. After all, he's only here because he can't die, right? The old man nodded in agreement and continued, yes. Furthermore, I've received information that his previous death was at the hands of his teammate, Kenzo Tatsu. The room's atmosphere grew more solemn as the implications of this revelation became evident. The old man provided further clarification, saying, It appears that Kenzo killed Yuji accidentally, as Yuji regained control of his body just as Kenzo's blade pierced his heart. A collective understanding settled over the room. It was clear that this first-year student, Kenzo, had been able to hold his own against three-fingered Sukuna, a feat that was far from small. Few could claim such an accomplishment, and it provoked contemplation on the incredible potential of both Kenzo, and Yuji. It was evident that only a select few, perhaps even to do, 
could contend with such formidable adversaries, even though it remained a challenging prospect. To ensure the success of this mission, we must separate Kenzo from Yuji, the old man concluded, emphasizing the necessity of this task. Tadu's excitement was palpable, and his intention to challenge Kenzo was clear to everyone in the room. It was widely anticipated that as soon as the exam began, Tudu would make a move to confront Kenzo. Ignoring the old man's attempt to halt his departure, Tudu turned to face him, his eyes gleaming with defiance. He delivered a stinging retort, I won't take orders from someone like you. Your taste in women is as terrible as your personality, and I've decided not to heed your commands. His words were sharp, and he didn't hesitate to make a direct threat. If you try to order me around again, I won't hesitate to kill. With that, Tudu left the building, leaving a sense of tension in his wake. The old man, who seemed to keep his eyes closed, inquired about their next course of action. What should we do now that he's gone? Miwa asked, seeking guidance. Don't worry about it, he will most likely rush toward Tokyo side Momo said. They then proceeded to make a plan on how to stop and attack every other member of the team efficiently and quickly. Pav change. With Maki looking extremely irritated, I couldn't help but smile, realizing what my next course of action should be after her detailed explanation of the plan. However, before she could respond or voice any objections, Gojo's voice suddenly blared over the speakers. I stood there, momentarily dumbfounded, listening to Gojo's antics with someone he seemed to have a close relationship with. Then, breaking my reverie, I called out, to do's coming this way. Just as I uttered those words, I deftly blocked a punch that was aimed straight at me. Tudu's eyes lacked pupils, making him look like a raging beast as he relentlessly unleashed punches and kicks upon me. I skillfully defended against his frenzied attacks and, after a powerful block, sent him reeling with a swift kick. Tudu sprang to his feet, a peculiar determination in his eyes. It was apparent that he held an intense desire to battle Yudo, which had somehow been redirected toward me. I couldn't help but wonder about the origins of these intense emotions he harbored, as it didn't seem healthy for him to yearn for a battle so fervently. With a confident grin, I declared, let's speedrun this. I immediately activated mana enhancement, allowing my mana to surge, and employed my mastery over gravity to make myself feel lighter, preparing for the battle that lay ahead. With a closed fist and unwavering determination, I rushed towards the burly opponent. My punch landed squarely on his chest, causing him to cough up a substantial amount of blood, and the air was forcibly expelled from his lungs through his nose. Despite the pain, he maintained a smile. He retaliated with his own flurry of attacks, and I expertly blocked and dodged his strikes when I could. Suddenly, he initiated an unfamiliar technique. As I lunged for another punch, he clapped his hands together. In an instant, I found him standing behind me. I hadn't moved but he had the question was with what. My punch met nothing but air while he seized the opportunity to strike me in the back. You've taken 80 damage, the notification indicated. Realization dawned on me, this was his curse technique. He had the ability to manipulate space and position, allowing him to disorient his opponents. I didn't falter. I rapidly repositioned using my teleportation skill, making it appear as if I had expertly dashed away from his incoming attacks. He looked stunned, his surprise fleeting within a millisecond before he dashed at me once more, determined to land a blow. I block his punch before I once again punch him really hard in the guts. He was sent flying a couple of meter backs and before he could even understand what was happening to him, I was already behind him. I punch him again and at this point it seemed like I was playing ping pong with his body as it was like a kid in kindergarten trying to fight a middle of freshman in high school. It wasn't fair, he seemed like he was enjoying it, before he tried a kick to which I blocked but something weird happened as I blocked the hit. Some sort of distortion was made in space as a black flash appeared as he kicked me and the power of his blow felt like they had become stronger to the power of 2.5. Your left hand is now broken. My left hand went limp as the hit that he threw landed and he had this look on his face. I looked at my arms before I look at him and he suddenly felt really heavy. He felt like he was carrying at least 50 to 100 tone worth of weight, and it was getting stronger but before he could do anything he got punch in the gut again but this time his body couldn't handle the power, and he passed out. I take out a healing potion from my inventory before I drink it. You've healed 80 damage. Your broken hand is now healed. Thank you for joining us on this incredible journey through what if a player was in JJK with level up system. I hope you found it as intriguing and thought provoking as we did. A big shout out to Deck302005 for crafting such a compelling story. Don't forget to check out their profile on Wattpad for more amazing works. The link is in the description below. 
If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Fanfic Fantasy if for more fascinating explorations into the world of fanfiction and fantasy. Your support helps us create more content like this, and we're always excited to hear your thoughts and suggestions in the comments section. See you guys in the next video.